So they picked who was going to host the Oscars. Is it Rich Evans? Surprisingly not, even though he had all this fame recently because he was on the Ellen show. I'm sorry, but I cannot take my eyes off Dick, Dick the, birth the Birthday yeah. Boy. <laughs> we haven't heard from Rich Evans since his appearance on the Ellen show. No. He just he just packed up and left. He's yeah. out there in L.A. now. Yeah, he's, he's, he's gone Hollywood, but they did pick Kevin Hart as the new host of the Oscars. Mm. Yeah, I hear he was on the short list. Mike, where are we? What is happening? What oh, is this show? Well, Jay, we're sitting in our, our office area. Uh, and first of all, before you have the chance to even type it. Too late. This is not replacing review. And review is not replacing best of the worst. And best of the worst did not replace half in the back. Well, now that we've cleared that up, I'm sure nobody will make that joke in the comments. No. Not a single person. No. But in all seriousness, folks, uh, this is called Jay and Mike Talk About. Or whoever and whoever talk about. Sure. Anyone this, can do it. This we'll particular see. episode is Jay and Mike Talk About, and it's our it's our first episode. Mm. Um, oh, and this is also not replacing Quick Cuts. <laughs> it kind you. of is, actually. Oh, yeah, it kind of is, <laughs> I, I guess. <laughs> Nobody remembers Quick Cuts. Yeah, that's good. That, that's, a, that's a program we did uh, 15 years ago. We made four of them. But here's the thing. I'll cut it to you straight. Uh, Jay and I both, independently of each other, watched a movie on Amazon. Uh, and I said, I watched it. And I, I typed up an email to Jay and I said, hey, did you watch this movie? And Jay said, I just watched it two days ago. Um, we, and, and so it just happened organically. Mm -hmm. And instead of doing a half in the bag on it, which usually includes breaking down the film and all these reasons why it worked or didn't work. And usually that's a movie that is a bigger movie that people have, will go out and see or have seen. Sure. Uh, we wanted to kind of make a quick video recommending this specific movie. Because yeah. both of us yeah. enjoyed it so much. How come dad doesn't have to help with couponing? Because your father has his own hobbies. So we're here to talk about a film called The Clover... Cloverfield Monster? I was just about to say it. It's, the called, the, it's called The Clove Hitch Killer. Yes, clove hitch is a type of knot. Yes, and to, to not be confused, this is not an entry in the clover field. No, no. Uh, even though the title is very similar. The clove hitch killer. Which, when I, I saw the title, and I expected, like, just kind of a, a corny horror film or something, and that's not what this is at all. This is like like a small-scale David Fincher movie. It's it's very well done. Yes, I was really surprised. Yeah, because I was like, I, I think the trailer was what got me hooked. I mean, oh, I was, see, I didn't even watch the trailer. Really? Yeah. So grabbing one of these tools and wham! There. Awkward talk with Dad. Over. The star is Dylan McDermott, uh, and and he was on the first season of American Horror Story. Oh. And he's in, he's in a little bit of the most current season, Apocalypse, which was excellent. I think I hate American Horror Story. That's a whole nother topic <laughs> though, that's not going to be talked about in this video. American Horror Story is awesome. It's awesome? It's, it's like, schlock. It's like garbage. It's, 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 the, it's the antithesis of everything I like in horror. Okay. Uh, and this movie is exactly what I like. And it's not even... It's not exactly a horror film. I mean, it's it's dark. It's more of a mystery thriller. It's very slow paced. Uh, a little, very... little twist of coming of age. Yes, it's very methodical. Um, but the basic idea is, yeah, Dylan McDermott is is dad, every man dad, and uh, his son is starting to suspect that his dad might be a serial killer. Mm -hmm. and that's basically it. Well, we we won't talk about too much that isn't seen in the trailer but i think what what hooked me is is seeing dylan mcdermott play this role which he was really great in oh yeah and um and it was just sort of like you know there's a little pull quotes like dylan mcdermott is amazing in this role and and there's just like this weird tension to it and i was like oh i'm gonna watch this i'm gonna watch this i don't normally watch horror movies believe it or not i know you do and i, I guess when they 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 referenced like extreme bondage and pervert stuff. That's, that's why you clicked on it. But I clicked. I didn't on know it. anything about it. I just watched it. I clicked on it for the performances. Um, that's what yeah. they all say. So the director uh, is a guy named 
Duncan Skiles? Yes, this is his first feature. Coming out of the gate swinging. This is such a sure-handed, like, I know. really mannered, precise movie. It's like I mentioned uh, David Fincher. It has that kind of feel where it's, like, very, like, all the shots are very specific and... and uh, the tone is very sort of cold and uh, distant in a good way, which makes it all creepier. I was thinking of, uh, specifically with David Fincher, I was thinking of Zodiac. Uh, and then I looked up, in preparation for talking about it here, I found an interview with him where he mentions Zodiac, specifically the scene where uh, the Zodiac killer sees the couple, like, by the lake. It's okay. This is all going to be okay. <laughs> It's just completely like stark. There's no music. It's not trying to be tense, and that's what makes it tense because yeah. it feels so real. Yeah, it's just similar to that show Mind Hunter. I don't know if you watched any of that. A little bit. That's I know that's Fincher too. So yeah. yeah. Um, but this guy, he directed a segment for the RoboCop. He, I remake? looked him up. He did like a bunch of. He had like a. He's a part of a group that had a YouTube channel. They haven't uploaded in a couple of years now. And then he directed one of the segments for our RoboCop remake, which, if you're unfamiliar, right before the big budget RoboCop remake came out, they had all these people do uh, individual scenes. Different people all over would shoot a scene from RoboCop, and then it was compiled together. They just did the same thing for Shrek, apparently. There's something called Shrek Retold that's on YouTube. I haven't watched it. But because this movie is so well done... At first, I assumed he did the famous dick shooting scene. Oh, he did not. N uh, yeah, he did not do the dick shooting scene. If you haven't seen it, look it up. RoboCop remake dick shooting scene. It's possibly the most amazing thing that's ever been made. It is great. He didn't do that scene. He had the unfortunate task of doing the scene right after that. Oh. He had to follow that up. But did he do a good job on his scene? He directed the hostage taker scene, and he makes it more uh, kind of conceptual and weird. Uh, it's it's a unique take, but, I mean, it's following up that dick shooting scene. That should have been the whole thing. You don't even need all those other segments. I didn't watch anything else from it, so <laughs> I, could, I can't comment on that. Yeah, but, but it seemed like you mostly had a comedy background, and then out of, seemingly out of nowhere, this movie shows up, and it's, like, one of the best serial yeah, killer it's movies. it's bizarre. It's bizarre. <laughs> um, it is one of the best serial killer movies. I said since Silence of the Lambs? Monster. Hmm. Uh, there's a handful, but this this is up there mainly because it's about a little more than just a serial killer or catching a serial killer. There's yeah. some, some coming of age stuff splashed in there. There's some uh, the 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 facade of uh, Americana. Yes. The, 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 the Christian wholesome. I mean, it's a little on the nose that he's a Boy Scout leader, and there's that whole like you know, plot of, about that. And there, you know, there's there's the, the, the facade of the normal American life and hidden underneath that is- There's this tension and horror the just shame, under the surface. The shame, tension, and horror of being a closeted weirdo <laughs> who likes getting off on choking women to death. Yes, well that's the other thing that it does is it's not, for one, it kind of starts as a mystery. Like, is his dad really the Clovich killer, or he's looking into it and trying to find get to the end, the bottom of it? Um, but the the resolution to the mystery happens much earlier in the movie than you would expect, mm -hmm. which was surprising. And then it kind of changes courses. It changes the narrative focus to a completely different character without getting into spoilers. And that was refreshing. Yes. That was neat. That was, that was, that, it, it turns into Back to the Future too. <laughs> Um, that's a odd reference, but I suppose that's yeah, right. You, you yeah. got to watch it in order to get what I'm saying. <laughs> but, uh, but also like Zodiac, it's not so much about the mystery of the serial killer as it is how this mystery affects the various characters. Yes. Especially when we're talking about the ending um, and what happens specifically in the ending. And, and obviously this is a spoiler-free video, so we're not going to talk about that. Right. Um, but it, but it all it all kind of hinges on the idea, like you mentioned, uh, the the... the there's the father who's a Boy Scout, Boy Scout like leader, his son who's a Boy Scout. They're part of this community that's very uh, uh, religious. And so it kind of becomes about, a lot of it is sort of about uh, how these younger people are sort of conditioned to just believe what they're told without questioning it at all. Which is also personified in the boy's friend who oh, yeah. is, is referenced as being closeted gay, mm -hmm. but he's a, you know, 
church going Boy Scout. And right. so there's a, there's that tucked away. There's Dylan McDermott's character, and Dylan McDermott in this is is creepy. Creepy as fuck. By in, trying to act normal or by acting yes, normal. He's, yeah. he's incredibly like frightening and, and and there's attention to his performance, but it's played so straight. And then the kid too. Yeah. The kid is really natural. But that kid, he's great. And yeah. every, everyone's great in it. And that's the weird thing is like this guy, I mean, this, whoever this Duncan... Duncan Jacks? Duncan Skiles... <laughs> Is I don't even know, but he is he is great at directing actors, and yeah. and this movie needs needs some limelight on it. You think your dad is Clovich? I don't know. Will the Obviously, it didn't even get a even small theatrical release, cause, uh, yeah. but you see it on there, and it's just like eh, Clovich killer. Yeah. And then you, you scroll through it when you pass like and you uh, think uh, a trash red box movie. Yes, exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Give it a give it a roll. Yeah. Give it a roll, and uh, I don't think we're gonna go on much further here, Jay. No, that's the idea. Quick recommendation: if you like uh, David Fincher films, if you like uh, the kind of uh, bubbling under the surface horror of suburbs, it reminded me of a better version of Summer of '84. Mm. I thought you were gonna say Serial Mom. It's, <laughs> it's it's a funnier version of Serial Mom. Hello. Is this the cocksucker residence? The Clovich killer is not chasing people down the street. It's not a Halloween remake with Jamie Lee Curtis. He's not choking people with the rope. And there's no one, there's no music in the whole film. There, there's like really subtle atmospheric stuff, but there's long stretches where there's no music at all. Um, it's what I always say, like uh, stillness and, and silence is so much scarier yes. when it's done well. And this movie does it like perfectly. Yes. It's a creepy serial killer movie that's also a coming of age story. Yes. And, that, uh, that's and, all and thematically say. that ending, the ending ties everything up. Perfect bow. Yeah. Yes. So get on Amazon. Amazon? Yeah. iTunes, sell the digital places, okay. I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. I got it on Amazon. Suck it out. <laughs> It took a while to get there. I put on a lot of bug spray. I had to rent a little boat. I had a, a Sherpa take me down the river. There's some snakes. Some, some tribal people shot arrows at me. But I got my copy and I made it all the way back to Milwaukee. Do you get it? I'm making a joke that I literally went to the Amazon to get this movie. So anyway, seriously, check out the movie. Yeah, bye.